eight or are we? We're actually we're actually on one forty eight on the bottom. One forty eight B on the bottom. All the way on the bottom. Okay, it's running already? Yeah. Okay, good morning, everyone. Yeah, on the bottom, by the Mishnah, Kedusha. says the Mishnah, Kedusha, Munei Adam et Rechav ve'et Patrotav ne'piv, av lo A man may count his guests and his dishes, all sorts of delicacies that he prepared, he could count them in his mind and in his mouth, but he can't read them off a paper. And he can't even think them off reading it off a paper in his mind, scan it with his eyes. Now, what is the problem? So we're going to see in the Gemara what the problem is. You're not allowed to list, read off a list of guests or of dishes off a paper. A person may draw a lottery with his children. You know, let's say there's a, a piece that everybody likes. All the kids want a specific piece. Not because of its size, as we're going to see it now, but it's the same size as the other ones, but it just looks better. So you, you're, allowed to do, you're allowed to throw, you know, draw a lottery. Well, eventually, it's capitalized, it's one of the Connected monokata. As long as you don't um, draw a lottery for the bigger versus the smaller. What the problem is, we'll see in the Gemara. Umitilin chaloshin. Al hakotchem yom tevav leal amonis. And the kohanim in the base of Mikdash are allowed to draw lots, chaloshin are lots. On, on different parts of the carbon and Yom Tif, but not on the portions. Now, what the difference is, we'll see in the Gemara. Okay, so the Mishnah started off, you're now to read a list of, is they all here today? They are. Now to read a list of what? Of, you may not read a list of, you, 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 Guests, yes. guests, guests, or your dish, your dishes that you're that you're planning to your your menu. My time out of the because a person might come to erase. Now, normally, by the way, this erasing is not going to get issued until right now because usually erasing is only when it's to write in its place. Here, you're not going to plan it to write. It's planning to say, "Oh, this guy's canceled. It's not coming." Mm-hmm. However, the chachamim knew how liable it was for it to happen. Therefore, they said you can't read. Abaya Omar Gzeda Shami Yikro Bishtori Hadlitz. Abaya says it's a Gzeda, lest he comes to read. Shtarei Hadyotot. Literally, that means Hadyotot, meaning the civil chat is contracts of sales. And of loans. Now, what's wrong with so? If you read your guest list, you can come to read your contracts. You can come to read things. Expense, uh, yeah. But what's wrong with reading those on Shabbat? The answer is because it says <laughs> you have to seek out. You may not seek out your own matters on Shabbat. So therefore, you can't read your own business dealings and all that type of stuff. Now, if you read your guest list, you'll get used to reading whatever you want, and then you'll end up reading. Things that you may not read. Other Rishon, many Rishonim say, um, why, 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 why can't you read them? So other Rishonim say, I told you, but other Rishonim say that anything that doesn't have any real benefit when you read it, I mean, you don't need it for Shabbat or Yom Tov, that's already included in, the, in what you're now allowed to read on Shabbat. Either because it's like Isra Muksa, or because it becomes too mundane and not, and therefore you might come to erase something off of them, or 
he might actually end up writing back. It means even a letter that's written, like, how are you, and all that. He gets shlonim. You can't read according to these Rishonim because you're going to might write something back. Anyways, we have found here an, an Isur, a prohibition to read Shtarehev Yotot and include it under that Isur is to even read a guest list lest you come to do that. Okay? Now, the other Mandalmer says uh, First round number is Rabbi. Rabbi said, not only. Um, and I worried about that, but I'm also worried about Shema Yimchok. I might erase someone off my list. So this is my benai. What's the difference in the halacha? Rabbi says the problems I might erase. And, and Rabbi said, I might end up reading something that's asur. So the Gemara says, what's the difference? The Gemara says, Ika benai the katab akotel in play. The difference is, if you wrote it on a very high spot on the wall up there, so you're not going to come to erase it. Is you guess this is over there. But, the man da'am is shemim kot lo chashina. The man da'am is shemim yik lo chashina. According to the man da'am that you might erase lo chashina, but that word is too high. According to the Amr, that you might read, Cheshina. Why? Because if you read that, you'll end up reading everything else. Okay? It says the Gemara, Ulamanda Amr Shamiyukh, Necho Shamiyukh. According to Abaye, that holds the problem is, sorry, Rabibi, that he says Shamiyukh, why is he worried about the problem of Shamiyukh? So even if you even if you're not worried that he's going to end up erasing, you should still be worried that he might end up reading other things if you allow him to read this. The two and furthermore, the Shema Yibchok Lo Chashina. Are you telling me that according to the one that holds it's the problem that you might come to erase, he's not worried about it when it's really high up? It's true that it's not so probable that he's going to go up there and erase something. It's very high up. However, we find in the Chod Shabbat, at least at this point, the Gemara brings a proof that even when something was very far-fetched, the Chachamim lo plug, they didn't differentiate. Lahashvot midotayim, they wanted to just keep their measures across the board. They didn't want to. So in this case, yes, this is the case now. So we just said, Asur. Where do we find that? The Tanan, because we looked at the Mishnah. Lo yikra oraner, a person may not read a safer in the light of the fire. Even if it's two floors high. Where the Malam de Baka, these prodding, uh, training sticks that they used when they plowed. So if, even if it's as long as two of them. Even if it's ten houses, one on top of the other. Don't read it. Why? Because you might come the lamp is all the way up there. But if you're reading by that fire, you might come to tilt the oil and be over on the Easter of Magil. Now, is it probable that you're going to be able to get there? No. Um, and we're not even worried that he's going to get a ladder. But the point is, Chacham didn't want to differentiate when they made Zerot. Therefore, they made it Asur across the board. So here too, says the Gemara, we should say the Chachamim, if you had a problem with Shema Yimchok, the Shema Yimchok issue should always remain. It doesn't matter how high up it is. The Gemara says, and the first question the Gemara asked is, what happened to the Isra of Shema Yikram? Elo says the Gemara, Ika Benai, there's another difference. The Katava Kotel Umitat. The man of Shema Yimchok, Hashina, the man of Shema Yikram, no Hashina. You wrote it on the wall, mitati, and your hand is low. Your hand could reach it. So if you're worried about erasing, of course, there's a problem. But according to the Randa Omer, Shema Yikro, lo We're not worried about Shema Yikro. Um, you know why we're not worried about Shema Yikro? Because, Huda Bishtaro Le 
because you're not gonna mix up a wall and a paper. Just because we're allowing you to read something on a wall, you're not gonna say, oh, now I can read things on the paper. You view it as two separate things. Therefore, there's no Easter of Shema Yikra, but there is a problem of Shema Yimcha. As the Mara Lamanda Omer Shema Yikra, Lechus Shema Yimcha. Why is it? Um, I buy a word about Shema Yimcha. So the Mara says, El Ikabinai the Choy Katav of that. He says, you know what the, well, the difference is going to be when you etch it in to a wooden ledger or a store owner's ledger, which they would be made out of wax, they would, they would wedge in, they would etch in um, some, they would etch in some writings there. So, there's no problem with Shem Yimchok. To read, that's, that would be a problem. But to, to, to erase, there's no problem there because you can't erase it. Why is he worried about Shem Yichok? 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 Why is he tell me that these ledgers won't be mixed up with papers? And if you let him read from the tablet and pinkers, he won't end up reading from something that is prohibited, like Shari Hed Yotom. They are Tanya, my Neodom, Kama, Bimifim, the Kama Bibachut, the Kama Monois, or Zilonia, with Mayem. A person may count how many guests he wants to sit indoors, which is the greater spot. Kama Bibachut, and how many people will have to sit outdoors. How many portions is going to place from the Miktav shall gabi a kotel abolo, Miktav shall gabi tavlu pinkas. Only from one that's on the wall, but not the one that's on the tavlu pinkas. Hechidon, what does it mean? Elaim the chosen mikta mashnacham mashnacham. If you wrote it with ink, what's the difference? Why would it be mechalek between if it's written on the wall or not? Both of them should be a problem because of Shema Yimchok. Right? Everybody agrees with Shem Yimchok. The only problem is, the only difference is when there's no it, problem with Shem Yimchok, the Chayim, so it must be that you etched it in, and now there's no Shem Yimchok. Uktani mikstav shagabi koyitav, v'loi mikstav shagabi tavlo mikus. So that's why it says, if you etch it into the wall, it's fine. But if you etch it into the tavlo mikus, it's not fine. Okay? And the reason, the, the difference must be, because in the wall, you're not going to mix a wall up with a paper. But in a ledger, you will. Aha! So you see that we do mistaken um, one for the other. A ledger, even if you etch it in, and a paper. El la olam de katava kotel umidle. So the Gemara says that the difference is, like we said before, that you wrote it on a wall. It was low down. With the Kakash al Khadirabo, if you ask me what about no, sorry. Akoisu Midli. You wrote it on a really high spot. Ah, you told me before the Rabba, the Rabba holds that that there's no problem, that the, even when there is no problem of no worries, that a person might come to an Isu Doraita like by the lamp. We still don't differentiate in Arab Zero. So why don't we say there's still a Xeda of Shama Yukok even when it's high up? Because the Rabbi Tanoi says the Gemara, Rabbi is Tanoi. The Machlik is Tanoi, even though Rabbi said it, but not necessarily so, because it's a Machlik. Where do we find this one? The Tanya. When Adam and Tachov and Patro Tami Piv, the person may count his guests and his dishes. Dishes means his, uh, his delicacies that he prepared from his mouth, but not from a written tab. Macha says, no problem if it's on the wall. If it's written low down, he might come to race. He must be very high up. So we see clearly that Rabbo is a machlokes tanoim. Therefore, that's the case where there'll be a Nafkamina, between a Bibi and a Baya, 
that a baby will be will be be worried about Shemini because he holds like Rabbo that is no difference uh, whether it's high or low since the Chacham were not Mechalik in the Exedot. However, Abaya will say the whole problem in our mission is Shema Yikra. He's coming to teach you that whenever you find that a person will probably not, whatever, any case, any scenario where a person will probably not end up erasing but it's high up, He's going to follow Rabbi Acha in this Brayta, which is not like Rabbo. And therefore, if it's written on a wall and it's high up, but there's no Isra, there's no Gzeira of Shem Yimchok, or then you're going to be machled with it with Shari Hadiyotaris, then it's going to be okay to read for this Shema Minah. So the Gemara says, V'hani Tanoi Kehani Tanoi. This machloikis, if whether the chachamim were, were relaxed the exerot whenever there's no shash. We just had between the Tanakam and Rabbi Acha, we find elsewhere as well. The Tanya, Eloim Bimarabi Shabbat. You're not allowed to look at a mirror on Shabbat. Because perhaps you'll see some hairs that are too long, and you'll come to snip them off. That's an Easter of Geziza. Okay, Gozez. That's what a guy is looking for. But he looks in the mirror to see what is missing. So, Rabbi Meir Mati in Marah Kaluba Kotel. Rabbi Meir is Mati with a mirror that's permanently fixed fixed onto the wall. So the Gemara says Maishna Kavua Bekotel Adahachi and Adahachi Achi Mitka Sheinu Kavua Nami Adahachi Achi Mitka. What's the difference? Because if you look at a mirror on the wall, you'd have to go get your scissors, and by that time you'll remember. And let's say you, let's say you looking at a mirror in your hand, you also have to go and grab the scissors. And by, by that time you'll you'll remember. So the Gemara says, talking about a metal sharp mirror. You know why they said that a metal mirror is a problem was a problem? Because a person will come to shear off his hanging hairs. Cut them off. So you see over here that. What's the difference? What's the difference between Rabbi Meir? Between a Mara Hakbul with Bekaisel and a Mara that's not Kabul Bekaisel. Because a Mara that's not fixed onto the wall. That one you have to worry that he might use to cut. But the other one, he doesn't. So you see that he differentiates in his Gzera. But the Tanakama, he doesn't differentiate. He says, you can't look at a mirror. I don't care if the mirror is is a real shash, or even if there isn't, the Chachayim just went across the board. And there we have it again, this machlok. Tanu Rabbanan, Rabbanan Tor. Ketav ha-melech tachat ha-tzura mitachat ha-diyok not. If you have a caption under a drawing or under a picture they made, different wars, the David ha-melech, with animals on the wall, there's a caption. Asul the Krotobi Shabbat, it's part of the Gzeira of Shema Yikra Bishtari Adyotu. And he might end up reading other things. Therefore, um, that's Asul as well. <clears throat> Not only like lists that are for your own needs, but even anything. The machlok is shown if you're allowed to read Sifra Sfarim of Chachma on Shabbat. Um,
So the Gemara says, Udiokna Atzma, this picture itself, Apechol Asul is Takel Al Mishum Shem Al Tifnu El Haalim. Do not turn straight after the foreign gods. My Talmud, where do we see anything? Am Rebichon Al Tifnu El Midatch. As she learns, Al Tifnu El Ilim could also be read, read Halalim, the, the crevices of your heart, the whole, the, the, the recesses of, the, over there, with the, whatever your heart makes up, which means. Don't turn towards people's actions that they, they make up themselves. Another shot is, El Don't be busy with looking at people's beauty when it, when it distracts you from thinking about a Kaddish Baruch and at his service. Now, this Machloik is we showing him. Um, if you let a look at pictures, Now, is this all about Abu Zara? Only things about Abu Zara and this machlokative. Things that are going to be used for Abu Zara. They let a look at them, or other restrainers say, even if it has nothing to do with Abu Zara. Because you're looking at all these other beautiful things, it's going to distract you. But according to them, it's only if you really pay very close attention to the details, you gaze at it, but not just to look. Um, the Magad Avram says that the Minhag is that we do look at things if they're not part of Abu Zara. The only things that have to do with Abu Zara is a problem. Mephis Adam in Banav. So the Mishnah said like this. A person is allowed to draw lots with his children about a portion but it's say with his sons and daughters. Why do I have to say sons and daughters? Anybody. My time sounds like with anybody else you could. People that are not forgiving to each other, even on small amounts. Meaning, when they give each other something, they always measure it and they down down to the to the tiniest detail. So they are bound, they are prone to be over because of their peda to, to, to violate on Shavani Yom Tov this Easter of Mida, measuring and Mishkal and weighing a minion. Minion is figure out they're like you gave me 40 things out of a hundred. I said, oh, give me the other 62. Make it 100. Mishnah in Uporin and yesterday's Mishnah, which is they're going to say Halveni on Shabbat. All these issues are a problem. Um, because since they're so macrid on each other, they're going to be over at Mishnah Mishnah in Uporin, be on top. On Yom Tov, on Shabbat. So, Uchidivrei Hillel, Af Mishum Rimis. According to Hillel, even because of Rimit. Why? Because they're going to lend each other saw the saw, which means they're going to lend each other um, items, and they're going to return that same item. And that item might be worth more money now, so they end up paying interest. So, a normal person will just say, I'm giving it to you as a present. Just take whatever the extras, take, take it as a present. There's no ribbit. But if people that are very particular and very, very scrimpy, and they don't let anything go by, if that little bit is important, the only reason why he's returning it is because he's embarrassed to not give back the same amount, the same loaf of bread. He's not going to start skipping and cutting, slicing off a little tiny piece at the end to, to, you know, so he doesn't pay back more money if it went up. So therefore, 
he's paying it to him only because of it. he's embarrassed. It's an, and therefore, it's a payment of repeat. Okay? So, he, so the Gemara says, what do we see from here? Therefore, you're not allowed to um, people in your home, since they were very, they, they always like to join the lots, to divide the food. Therefore, you're not allowed to draw these The Gemara is asking, uh, so therefore, you, therefore, you're not allowed to make God a lot with people that are not in his family. Why? Because the very fact, we'll get to the family in a second, the very fact that they, they, they're trying to, to draw a lot to see who gets that portion means that they're very particular about each other. Once they're very particular about each other, um, and now that a portion them, portions of Shavani Yom Tov, because they're going to come to either make a lottery or to measure them out, all these things. So the Mara says, So you shouldn't be able to do this with your family either. Because you see, they're very careful. And then they're going to come to measure all that. So the Mara says, How do you type it? You're allowed to lend your sons and your household with rebit in order for them to taste the bitter taste of having to pay interest. And that way you'll train them to stay far away from us. Because really everything belongs to you. So therefore, if they pay you extra, they're not really giving the, you their money. They're giving you back your money. <clears throat> so therefore, rebid, you'll never have. There's no, will never be a problem if you divide things and lend things to children. But for the same reason, there's no problem of measuring either. Because children don't really have any rights in portions at all. Everything belongs to the father. And he can really do whatever he wants, give it to everyone. All he's trying to do is, is to, to, to make sure there's no jealousy between them. So he makes pretend, he draws lots, but he doesn't really have to do that. Therefore, there's no shash, there's no word that he's going to come to measure it. Therefore, says the Gemara, um, that's why he's allowed to draw lots. He says, So why can't he draw lots from, to see who's going to get the larger and not the smaller? Really, you couldn't. But the mission is missing words. And this is really what it says. A person may draw lots with his children and household. Allah Shulchan. A filu because everything belongs to him, and therefore he's allowed to even lend with repeat. My time, oh. and the reason they could only do is because people are going to be over on the Easter of Mina. But to draw lots. For a larger portion versus a smaller portion, even in the weekday, for others, it's a sort of why? Because which means even though everybody paid the same amount, let's say for the same for, for a portion, and now he's going to make a lottery of who gets which piece, people are going to bet on it. And the betting is uh, is asur. And the reason why it's asur is because people usually the means that they throw dice 
and all that is because they don't really want to give the money. The only reason why they're playing the game is because they're hoping and they're betting on winning. Therefore, um, it's a problem. Like they lie, you steal it. If you if you if you uh, if you take money and you win. Another reason is because you're going to be involved in doing nothing in your in your life. Just so therefore, they made it after. Matilin chalashim ala kochem yadim. The kohanim were able to throw lots on what the Mishnah said. Ala kochem yadim. Avoloy alamois on the korbanot, but not on the portions. What does that mean? The Gemara says, "My avoloy alamois." What does it mean? Amar Yaakov brought about Yaakov. Rabbi Yaakov, the son of Bat Yaakov. He says, Meaning, you can't make, to go on even the Beit HaMikdash, they could draw lots, but they cannot draw lots Now, first of all, why are they allowed to draw lots on the regular covenant of that day? Even though we just said before that you can't do such a thing if you're not related to each other, and because we might come to do all these isurim of what? Of measuring. So the answer is, but the Kohanim, since it's, it's, about, it's about preventing them from fighting, so the Goralot are going to help a mitzvah or right to happen of eating kachim. Therefore, it's okay. And the question is, what the Gemara is saying, that you, they can't make a lottery on Shabbat Yom Tov for yesterday's meat. So the Gemara says, Pshita. Well, of course not. Why would I think that I could? The Torah says, the Pasuk in Hosea said that the Kohanim our, your nation are like the bickering, fighting Kohen. So you see the Kohanim more prone to fighting. So so maybe we should allow them to make, to prevent these fights, so that they eat the kachim, even in the weekday. We should allow them to make a goro on Shabbat for the weekday stuff of Kamash Malon, and it's only for the Kohanot on Yom Tov itself. Now we just bring different members of Rab Yaakov Rei Debet If a person got punished through you, through another person, they don't allow the person that brought about his friend's punishment in the confines of the Mechitza of Kadosh Baruch Hu. Even if a person suffered, let's say Ruvain suffered from Shimon, and now Shimon had to get punished, still, all in all, he caused about, he caused somebody's punishment, and therefore, they're upset with him. Meaning, if he's prayed for it, and if he sees his friend getting hurt, he should pray that it should stop. But if he says, you know what? I'm going to pray that something happens to my friend because he deserves it. And then, okay? And then he doesn't, and then it happens, or he doesn't pray. It's a problem. That the Navi Michiyahu told the king of Achov. The story of there was the king of the of the Jew of Malchi Yehuda was a tzaddik. His name was Yehoshaphat. He made a treaty with Achov, the king of the rest of the of the Shratim of Kla Yisrael. Look at up. And he decided he asked. Now he made a treaty with Achov. He asked. Can you fight a war with me against Aram? 
But fine. So let's find out. But Yoshev said, "Let's first go to the Navi to find out if this is a good idea." So Achav got he gathered four hundred false prophets. They all said, "Mamish the same." Go up, and Hashem will place in the hands of the king. But Yerushafat, he wasn't happy with his Nevi'im. He decided he wants to go to another Navi. So he called the Navi, Achav called Michio ben Yabla. He was a real Navi, a great Tzaddik. And he told Achav that if you go to Muhammad, you're not going to come back in peace. And all the Nevi'im that told you otherwise, they were mistaken through a spirit of falsehood, of lies. So the Pasuk of the year says, Hashem. Hashem said, this is what Michio is telling Achov, Be fattest, Achov, who is going to seduce, to convince him? To go and then fall in the height in the in the in the Ramot Gilad, the Yom is there, Bekol is there, Omer Bekol, and one of these guys is going to say like this, and one of these guys is going to say like that. Which means one Navi is going to try to convince him like this, another one like this. And there was a spirit that said, "I will go convince." Him. How? I'll become a, a, a false spirit in the mouth of all of his prophets. Go convince him. You'll be able to convince him. Save us, say, King. Go ahead and do so. What does it mean, this false spirit? Whose spirit was able to, 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 to do this to Achav? This was the spirit, the Ruach, the Neshama, of Navota Yisraeli. Achav killed him in order to take his vineyard. Who might say, Omar Rav, say Mimchitzasi. He said, leave, leave my, leave my, 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 uh, what is it called again? Area? My area. Right, my Mimchitzah, my confines. Because his brother was not happy. Because at the end of the day, Navot was killed in cold blood by Achav. So therefore, he had the right to what? To go and punish Achav. Right? We know the story. He had a beautiful vineyard right near Achav's palace. Achav wanted to buy it. Navot didn't want it. Sell it for any money. So Izevel, she got uh, false witnesses to say that he, that Navot, was Mivarech is Hashem and the king. So they killed him. And now the rule is the king takes over any, anybody who's condemned to death. So therefore, Novice now came out and he became a Ruach Shek, he became a false spirit to convince Ahab and his prophets. Then Akash Baruch got upset with him. So you see that if you cause your friend to get punished, even if you had a right because you're upset, Akash Baruch Hu doesn't want you near. Maybe the reason why you have to leave the conference of Hashem is not because he caused the punishment for Achim, but because the spirit of Navot was willing to become a false spirit, to say a lie. Once it becomes a lying spirit, it can't be near Hashem. <laughs> Words of Sheker can never stand before my eyes. Kajmuruch cannot tolerate with his emmet anything of Sheker. Elo rather, we know it's here. There was a Nebuah that was on Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babel, in Chavakuk, and the Nebuah of Chagavakuk was as follows. You got satiated with too much honor, so you will have to drink the cup of Taliba. Meaning, you have to drink the cup of Gehenna. 
Okay? The hey are what does it mean? Savate kalomi kavod is that the nucha nucha netzer? Okay, because what did he do? He satiated from shame. Mikavod. What did he do? He would force other kings to cohabitate with him. And when Tzitkiyo, the king of Yehuda, which was his prisoner, did you say that other kings cohabitated? Yes, the Bukhaneta. Cohabitated. Have relations, yeah. Well, I didn't say, is that the right word? No, no, no sorry. Yeah, Bishkev Zoha. So, this is what, this is what the Bukhaneta did. And when he came to Titiyo Melech Yehuda, his prison, king of Yehuda, that king, that was also his prisoner. Um, what happened was, his Orla was. It became very ugly. It just came all over him, all over his the bris, in a very, in a very embarrassing way. So, what happened was, therefore, he was, it was a nest. A miracle happens. You should be able to do that. So, therefore, it says, we're going to see the exact story now. Should take gam atav he'arel. That's a zetzit kiyo. Meaning that you tzit kiyo, you yourself. You're going to have to drink the, the bitter cup together with the Arel. Arel means the person that has Arlo, it doesn't have a bit. Now, why is Zitkiyo going to have to drink this terrible potion of, of Gehenna with the Nebuchadnezzar? Because at the end of the day, Zitkiyo caused this punishment for the Nebuchadnezzar. So, therefore, since he caused this miracle to happen and Nebuchadnezzar got punished, He's going to be thrown out of the confines of Hashem and punished. So therefore, um, now you have to say again, like the first said before, that Rashi's master, that Tzitkiyo said, okay, you want to have relations? Fine. So he basically brought about, because he knew that a miracle would transpire. See, he brought about, he wanted the Nebuchadnezzar to be punished. And he knew that if the Nebuchadnezzar tried with him, he would be punished. And a miracle would happen. So, so by doing that, see, he wanted, he wanted to dig a ditch for the Nebuchadnezzar that he should fall into. And therefore, if you want someone to get punished because you, even if you have the right, you will be thrown out of Hashem's um, context. So the Gemara says, that's not a good proof. Chodah the Kuli Krav bin Nebuchadnezzar. The whole passage is not to about Nebuchadnezzar and Tzitkiyot. It's only to about Nebuchadnezzar. Okay? It's saying, your Arlo will be revealed. Just like you revealed everybody else's Arlo, that you ashamed, so your Arlo will be revealed. The all, Tzitkiyot Tzadiko, my Havalei the Mebedlei. What do you want him to do? He was totally forced. He's a prisoner of the Vukhanetza. He brought it about. What should he do? When the Vukhanetza wanted to do this to, to Tzitkiyo HaMelech, um, And what does the Pasuk say? When the Russia wanted to do the oyster tzaddik. So you see the Rav called Tzitkiyo a tzaddik. So we see clearly that he was an onus. And therefore, how should he be punished for this act? Ella, so the Gemara says, Mehoch, gam anosh la tzaddik lo tov. The aim lo tov, Ella Rav. The Pasuk says, that when a tzaddik brings about a punishment for somebody else, it's also a lot of. And a lot of is Meaning, tzaddik ato Hashem. You Hashem, you're a perfect tzaddik, and you don't want resha. The lo yagur, therefore, b'mgur chalo. Therefore, nothing in your abode can be bad. And since a person that brings about bad for others is called Ra, and Akash doesn't tolerate any Ra in his home. 
Therefore, that person will not be allowed in his home. So the Gemara goes back. The Gemara goes back to the, the Gemara is going to go back to the story of Nuchanetza in a moment exactly what happened to his Allah. But in the meantime, the Gemara says, what does it mean, chaloshim? They draw lots, the Kohanim. I'm actually chaloshim, lishin the Puru. Where do we find that the word chaloshim is a lot of lots? When Nebuchadnezzar fell, he fell from the heavens. Halel ben Shocha, you used to be compared to the great star of Halel ben Shocha. And now, Nigdatel Oris, you've been cut off to the ground. Cholesh al Goyim, that word Cholesh is used. Amr Abba Barafuna, in Labicha Yomatul Pur al Gadoli Malchut, Leda Ezebe Yomisha Mishkam Sukhur. What did he do? He used to draw lots to know which king is the right king to force for um, for Mishkev Zohar. Uchtiv kol malchei goyim kulo. All the goyim. The end of the passage says, Shochu b'chavir ish b'esri. Amar ab Yerichanon, Shenochu Mishkev Zohar. They were all able to lie with honor in their households, meaning till now they were being forced to lie in the house of the Nebuchadnezzar with him. Now they were able to go back home. But we see that the word cholesh means a lottery. The Omer Abiyach and Kliyom Shalei Sera Shalei Mitzvah Shalei Mitzvah Kol Biryo Biryo Shenemar Nocho Shok to Kolor Tzpotzulino Nechlal De Ad Hashto Loi Hadurino when, after he died, it says that the world became calm. Potsurino! Song burst forth. Burst forth. That means that while the Nebuchadnezzar was alive, there was such fear, nobody sank. Nobody left. There was no song, there was no... Because the Kedush Baruch Hu said that the Seirim, which means the, the demons, are going to dance in his palace. But if you walk into a palace, the demons depart. So you're not allowing Hashem, this prophecy, to be fulfilled. So you shouldn't stand if you find the ruins. Now, does this apply to the ruins? Of, um, others say simply because it's dangerous to stand there. Are you allowed to stand in the ruins of, of the Nebuchadnezzar's palace? his Arla, his foreskin, spread 300 amot. The Mepharshim said, even though that many times is an exaggeration, but here it's not, Mepharshim say. 300, 600 feet. It, it, the, the, the foreskin just, just grew. And therefore, and it went all over. The entire, there was a huge party, all the kings. And it just covered the whole party. So he had the greatest shame by trying to, to go to Tzitkiyo Melech Yehuda. You want a great base. This is what he's doing. So he, he ends up with the same aim that you're trying to do this to Tzikiyo Melech, you will suffer shame. There's nothing. You're going to see huge miracles. Mashiach comes. Be'ez HaShem. Be'korev. At the time that that Russia fell into Gehenna, all the people that are in Gehenna, they start to scream. Maybe he's coming to govern over them. People were scared of him after his death in Gehenna. Or maybe to become sick like them. What are you coming here for? Are you coming to Gehenna to be our like king? Are you like the new devil in Gehenna? Or are you just coming to get sick like we're all sick here in Gehenna?
So, you tell the Basque of Omra, Mimina Omtu, the dog Hoshka was there. Basque came out and said, You think you're going to have it more pleasant than the others? Rida, you're going to go down like everybody else to the depths of Gehenna. The Hoshka was there. And you will lie there with the other Arelim there. I want to tell a story that the mayor of, uh, of New York City was speaking in front of Baruch Ber Leibovich from Europe. He came, one of the great Tzadikim, Baruch Ber, came to New York to collect funds. He didn't speak English. And, he, and the mayor of New York was giving him the key to the city because he was such a holy. I don't know, he was speaking over there. And he asked him, what is the Arel talking? What is he saying? He called him the, the Arel, the guy. He's the big mayor of New York City. To him, he's an Arel. He just didn't have a bridge really as an Arel. That's what the Gemara is calling. The Chanetzer here, the great king. Eich, Shobas Noigeis, Shobso Madhevom. The Pasuk says in Yishayo. Wow, whoa. How did this great oppressor stop oppressing? Like, whoa, what a major phenomenon, this, this, and he got killed. Shobstam Adhevo. The, the owner of the gold has ceased. Which means, he had such, they had so much money, he took so much taxes from all the countries that he had. Look, it, it all stopped. Amr Yud Amr What does that mean? Shobstam Umazu Shomra. You know what ceased? The nation that would say the past. Everybody has to count their money and their gold in order to bring it to the, to the tax and bring it to us. Keep bringing without any limit. Just keep bringing all your money. Says the Gemara, one more pasuk. When he came back to his kingdom, and it was a time that he left his kingdom. And he came back. He praised himself and he said, "Did a pasuk in Daniel? I have even a greater kingdom now. What is that greater? Because he rode on a lion, the kashar tanin and he tied on the head of the lion a snake, the Kaim Ashenemar, so that he was able to fulfill what he had in his in the Nevu of Yirmiyo on the Buchanetz of Gam and Chayat Asadem and Nathanum. I'm even going to give him the animals to serve. He'll have dominion and governorship over the animals. That's what he had when he came back for his second term. <laughs> 